On December 26, 1900, a small ship captained by Jim Harvey was on its way to bring supplies and a shift change for three lighthouse keepers. These three lighthouse keepers were James Ducat, Donald MacArthur, and Thomas Marshall, who worked on the remote island of Ilian Moor. This was a routine shift change to relieve the three lighthouse keepers after a long stay at the lighthouse, but little did Captain Jim Harvey know this shift change would be like none other than he had ever experienced before. As the ship neared the dock, the captain realized that the relief flag had not been raised. This was odd because it's usually customary to raise the relief flag during a shift change. The captain decided to blow a horn to get the attention of the lighthouse keepers, but once this raised no response, they fired a flare as a last resort before finally deciding to come on shore and walk to the lighthouse themselves. Once the replacement lighthouse keeper, Joseph Moore, got off the boat and arrived at the lighthouse, he found it completely empty. After some investigation on his own, he began noticing strange remnants of the vanished lightkeepers, small things that proved that someone had been living there recently, but now had all but vanished. In a letter describing what he saw, he writes, on entering, I looked at the fireplace and saw that the fire was not lighted for some days. I entered the rooms in succession and found the beds empty, just as they left them in the early morning. I did not take time to search further, for I naturally well knew that something serious had occurred. Along with what Moore had mentioned, he had also described many strange things that seemed to oppose each other. For example, there was still uneaten and unfinished dinner on the dining table and two of the three coats that belonged to the light keepers were gone, but one remained, as if the men were here a moment ago, but had simply and unexpectedly vanished. Along with this, there were also other misplaced items that could not have been altered by the light keepers alone. Moore had found that there were iron railings that had been torn out of the concrete, a one-ton rock that had been displaced, and a box of stored ropes that was missing despite being securely wedged into place. After seeing the scene, Moore returned to the boat to inform the captain about what he'd discovered. Once he explained the situation to the captain, they decided to send a telegram to the mainland that read, A dreadful accident has happened at Flannan's. The three keepers, Ducat, Marshall, and The Occasional, have disappeared from the island. On our arrival there this afternoon, no sign of life was to be seen on the island fired a rocket, but, as no response was made, managed to land Moore, who went up to the station but found no keepers there. The clocks were stopped and other signs indicated that the accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have been blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane or something like that. After receiving this telegram, Robert Murhead, a man who knew these three men personally, launched an investigation. Although it was the best they could do in the 1900s, they found nothing out of the ordinary that hadn't already been reported. Although, after searching the island, there was one very chilling discovery. This was the discovery of the lighthouse's log. The lighthouse kept a log to report what the lightkeepers did for the day and report the conditions of the lighthouse in the island. In the logbook, on the 12th of December, Thomas Marshall wrote, Gale, north by northwest. Sea lashed to fury. Stormbound 9 p.m. Never seen such a storm. Everything shipshape. Duke and irritable. 12 p.m. Storm still raging. Wind steady. Stormbound. Cannot go out. Ship passed sounding foghorn. Could see lights of cabins. Duke at quiet. MacArthur crying. This log entry describes a large storm, stronger than Marshall had ever seen. He writes that everything's shipshape which could either mean that nothing has been damaged yet, or that the lighthouse and the lighthouse keepers themselves are fully prepared for this coming storm. He also describes the attitudes of the lighthouse keepers, saying that Ducat had become irritable. Marshall writes again at noon, explaining that the storm is still raging. He describes that he can see a ship pass in the ship's cabin lights from his shelter in the lighthouse, as the storm has become so strong that he can no longer leave. He also reports on the state of the other lighthouse keepers again. It appears their state has become worse, as Ducat, who was originally irritable, has now become quiet. He also mentions a very strange occurrence, in that Donald MacArthur, a man who was known for being very tough, was crying. Why he was crying and what brought him to the state still remains a mystery. 
On the 13th, Marshall wrote, Storm continued through night. Wind shifted west by north. Duke it quiet. MacArthur praying. 12 noon, gray daylight. Me, Duquette, and MacArthur prayed. Here, Marshall is reporting on the continuing storm. He is keeping logs on the direction it's headed, and says it has now lasted all night. His tone and mood in the lighthouse has now completely changed. All three lighthouse keepers have now become very solemn. This long and harsh storm described by Marshall is one that has led three grown men to be afraid, cry, and pray for their lives. On the 15th, the final log writes, 1 p.m. Storm ended. Sea calm. God is over all. In Marshall's final eerie entry, the storm is now over. After three days of fear, prayer, and harsh winds, Marshall accepts that God is above all. The tone and events described in these entries are very strange and out of character for these three experienced lighthouse keepers. Marshall, Duquette, and MacArthur were all men who were not new to the risks of lighthouse keeping. They also knew that the lighthouse itself was rather newly built and well stocked for a storm like this. Still, regardless of all of this, they were terrified to the point of tears and prayer. Not only this, but the logbook still does not explain the disappearance of the lighthouse keepers. The book stated that all three were alive during the storm, but once the storm ends, the last entry describes nothing but the sea. The emotional and physical state of the men is not mentioned, neither is the condition of the lighthouse. With this last puzzling entry, the men disappear. The events described in the logbooks creates a horrifying setting for what might be the three lighthouse keepers' final days. But the strangest and perhaps most terrifying part of this case is the fact that according to weather experts, there were no recorded storms near or on the Elian Moore Island at all during this time. During December 12th to 15th, when the lightkeepers were detailing the extent of the storm in their logbook, the weather reports from officials actually indicated roughly normal weather conditions for the Elian Moore Island. There was nothing nearly as serious as was described in the logbook. This discrepancy not only goes against the events described in the logbook, but also doesn't explain the condition of the lighthouse itself. If there was no storm, then there is absolutely no logical explanation for the torn up iron rails in the misplaced boulder found by the replacement lighthouse keeper when he searched the house. On December 17th, there was a reported storm on Elian Moore Island, but it was nothing out of the ordinary definitely not enough to cause the damage on the island. The reported storm also does not match up with the dates described in the logbook, meaning the storm described by Marshall in the book is entirely unexplained. One commonly used theory to explain the events described in the logbook is the possibility that the isolation and extended amount of time spent alone on the island caused the men to go crazy or begin hallucinating. Although, there are many holes to this theory. First of all, if the men were hallucinating, then the physical damage to the lighthouse on the island, such as the moved boulder and the torn iron rails, would still remain entirely unexplained. Secondly, the three lighthouse keepers had only been on the island for around two to three weeks, and each person had two other light keepers that they could talk to and were in contact with the whole time. None of these light keepers were isolated in any way from each other so the likelihood of hallucination and insanity is actually very low. Although, if there was no storm, and the no likelihood that the lightkeepers had gone insane from isolation, what could have caused this much fear in them? What could they all have seen? Let's backtrack to December 15th, before anyone knew that there was anything wrong with the lightkeepers. On that day, a ship passing Elian Moore Island noticed that the lighthouse wasn't operational so it reported the anomaly to Cosmopolitan Line Steamers HQ, but the report was dismissed and no action was taken. December 15th was also the last day that the final entry in the logbook was made, so whatever happened to the lightkeepers likely happened soon after that final entry. Theories for this case have ranged from aliens to pirates to homicide. Due to the sheer lack of details and evidence, truly anything could have happened. Although there are many amusing theories, let's begin with some of the most plausible. One possible theory is that the three lightkeepers were experiencing mercury poisoning, which caused them to imagine a storm. 
The hallucinations from the poisoning likely led to a lack of understanding for their surroundings, which caused the lightkeepers to leave the lighthouse, where they likely got swept away by a wave or drowned. In the 1900s, lighthouses used mercury to increase the brightness of the light from a lighthouse and extend its range. This continuous exposure to mercury could have led the lightkeepers to experience mercury poisoning and the hallucinations that result from it. Although this theory could explain the logbooks and their record of a storm that doesn't technically exist, it also explains why the lightkeepers went missing, but it does not explain the considerable physical damage done to the lighthouse. The most plausible and popular theory is that two of the three lightkeepers went outside to secure a crate and got swept up by a rogue wave. Two of the keepers had been fined in the past for not storing equipment properly, so the keepers must have made sure to keep everything secured. The keepers must have noticed a crate that wasn't properly secured, took their coats, and went outside to fix it. The third lightkeeper stayed inside the lighthouse, as it was prohibited for all three keepers to leave the lighthouse at once. As he stayed inside, he saw a rogue wave come in and, as fast as he could, ran outside to warn the other two, leaving his coat inside. Unfortunately, it was too late and the wave swept all three out to sea. The logbook and its entries were then created as a fake and was later written into the story just to attract attention. This theory is the most popular as it explains the strange state that the lighthouse was in and also creates an explanation for the logbook as well. The final theory, and one of the least plausible but most interesting theories, is that the keepers were kidnapped or taken by supernatural creatures. Before the lighthouse, the island of Elian Moor was home to an active chapel in the 7th century. Their leader, St. Flannan, and his followers believed that the island was home to supernatural powers. In fear of the paranormal activity on the island, the church and its followers decided to leave. The story of supernatural creatures on the island persisted throughout its history and became one of the most popular theories in this case. The tale of the missing lightkeepers on Elianmore Island has long been subject to embellishment and storytelling, and even became the topic of many movies and songs. Movies such as The Vanishing and The Lighthouse were all based on the story of this disappearance. You tell no one, and I mean absolutely no one, one more spoken and we are dead. Tell me, what's a timber man want with being a wiki? It's looking to earn a living. It's like any man. Starting new. On the run. Although we may never know what truly happened to the men, the story of the three missing lighthouse keepers will have a place in Elian Moore's history forever.